doing actual production with the bums, uh, how how was that going from doing remixes, from doing DJing, from doing A and Ring to actually producing a real song on a big label and a big release? Um, it was just, uh, you know, when they said that they had got a record deal for him and they were starting to work on it, I was like, man, I want to come play you guys some of my beats. You know what I'm saying? And I'd go up there and play beats. And, and basically Sway, I mean, uh, Tech and uh, Joe were producing the whole thing. You know what I mean? It was their guys that they found. That I think Sway found. They were from Oakland. And then, um, and then me, I was just like, you know, trying to get my beats in there too. So, but when they heard something that they liked, they were like, oh yeah, that one's cool. The, you know, the, the bums heard it and they liked it. So, and then, you know, just all, really all of us produced it together. You know, I, I made the, I made the beat, but like tech recorded them and, you know, coached them through the recording of it. I wasn't, in, I wasn't that good at recording yet. I was still making beats, you know what I'm saying? But he had like, he had a studio that he had access to that he got to learn and actually engineer and stuff like that. And that's where I learned it with him. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, it was like all of us made those records together. Yeah. And with the engineering, I never, I don't think I've ever even asked you about this, but the Bobby Leo record, didn't you uh, engineer and work on that as on more than just producing? I did like a couple of freestyle records, you know, back then that's where freestyle people was, uh, you know, they were paying money back then. You, you might get a thousand dollars or, you know, 1500 bucks to make a, a record for somebody. And Bobby Leo was a guy that used to come over to a club. I used to DJ at, and I used to play freestyle music there. You know what I'm saying? Like sweet sensation and Stevie B and all that stuff. And he used to come in there and he was like, and you know, I, I told him I make, you know, freestyle music. And he was like, oh, I'm a freestyle singer. Make a song for me. Here's 500 bucks. I was like, I'll take it, 500 bucks. And I made that beat for him. I went in the studio. And he paid for the studio time. So it was like, I was like maybe like 16, 17 years old. I, and it was like the first time I got to like control the studio. And make, that record sounds like shit. But, you know, like freestyle fans like it because it was something from that era. You know what I mean? But for freestyle music, like I, I did a, a couple of freestyle records. Yeah. And what what was it early on that made you want to get into beyond just the producing, but the engineering, the mixing, the actual, the full scope of it? Because I I was a DJ first, so from DJing you're you like you hook up the turntables, you know, you run the wires to the speakers and all that stuff. When you start working on beats and you got your drum machine, you got to wire it up, you got to hook it up to the board, then you got to start learning how to make it sound good. You know what I'm saying? So there was a an engineer guy that I used to work with that I used to go use his studio. His name was Michael Denton. And um, Michael was like really very studious, like showing you like, this is how you EQ. You can't put that much bass on the, on the kick or else it does, it won't record on the tape machine. You know, he, ta he taught us how to engineer and make our sound sound good. And, um, and then, and from as you start producing, you start listening to other people's records. You're like, man, I need to make my shit sound like that. Like, what are they doing? You know what I'm saying? Oh, they're using real keyboards. I got to start learning how to play the keyboards. You know what I'm saying? They're using real guitars. I got to start learning how to play the guitar. I got to, you know, there, was, there wasn't anything that I felt like was going to be a hindrance to me doing what I wanted to do and to like create what I wanted to create. If I had money to pay somebody, I'd pay them. But if I didn't, I'd have to just learn how to do it myself yeah figuring it I'm, out i'm own. not gonna do it like i'm not gonna play i'm not gonna play like uh like jimmy page from led zeppelin but i'm gonna play it where you're gonna like it or i'm gonna like it right no until i learn and you get better you know what i'm saying well that's the thing that that's always impressed me with you is your uh willingness to learn and try things and i think from knowing you that's really served you very well um, so where does that come from? Do you think as a person? Curiosity, you know, obsession. Like I listen to music and I'm like, yo, what kind of guitar is that right there? What keyboard is it? You know, I totally like analyze it. I want to understand it. I want to learn it. Like, you know, like, man, YouTube is amazing right now. You can go in there and learn so much shit about music, writing music, different chords, how to play shit. It's like really fun. And now it's even become more funner to me because, 
you know, as I want to do other styles of music and stuff, you know, you have to go study that stuff for a little bit. And it just, it's like, Oh, it's like a, it's like a wormhole that never ends for me. And not just the, the musical side of it, but recording and, and different ways to mic things up and different plugins and different fucking effects boxes, you know, stuff that they don't have on the computers that you got to go buy and plug it in. This, this oldies record that Snoop that Snoop's been working on has been really fun to work on because he wants it to sound like a real oldies record, like an East Side Story, you know, roll, rolling down Whittier Boulevard record. So we're in here in his studio trying to record stuff exactly how they did it to make it sound like that, which is real fun. We're like using all live organs. We're using pedals. We're not, you know, every, we're recording to the, to, to the computer, but we're trying to make it as old sounding as possible and that's like it's such a cool challenge because i love that old music you know what i'm saying so i'm like listening to it and getting inspiration from motown to stacks to whatever you know what i mean well i was going to save this for later but since we're kind of in this area uh one of my most amazing memories that we have is when you invited me to come to your door session when you were oh yeah that's right you was there huh yeah you had me at the house and i was just like not only thank you again for that, but that was... I got a video of that somewhere. I got to get the tape transferred. Yeah, I still want to see it um, because that, that was amazing. But uh, for you, how have you found on the producing side that you're able to, you know, work with, say, The Doors, like navigate so many of these different worlds that you've been able to do at a super high level to where you can do a record with a Snoop Dogg, but then also... Granted, you work with Snoop on the Riders in the Storm, but still work with the doors. And they're like, oh, yeah, come on, Fred. <laughs> you know, that was like a crazy opportunity that came up. And that really came from Snoop. They asked Snoop to uh, do a song for that video game. And Snoop's manager, Ted, you know, facilitated that. You know what I mean? And then I asked. Uh, so Snoop asked me to do, and I actually didn't want to do that record because I love the doors so much. I'm such a fan of the doors. And I was like, man, there's just some records like you're not supposed to sample and you're not supposed to reuse. You know what I mean? Like you don't go and remake Bohemian Rhapsody. You know what I'm saying? That's like, there's some shit that you just don't, you just leave alone. You know what I mean? And the doors riders on the storm is like, you can't remake that. You can't touch that. Just like you can't, especially not make it a rap song. You know what I mean? But Snoop was like, he knew I was such a Doris fan. And I kind of made him a Doris fan because we used to watch the movies on the tour bus. And I was always playing the Doris shit, like the shit that he wasn't going to listen to. Not like the regular songs, like uh, Light My Fire and all that. I'm, I'm playing other shit for him. And so he was like, well, because if you don't do it, I'm going to get somebody else to do it because it's going to get done. So you might as well do it. And I was like, fuck. Yeah. And I start thinking about it, like, who's he going to get to do it? This person or that person? They don't like the doors. They ain't going to make that shit sound cool. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do it. So I did it. And then at the last minute when I was going to go mix what we did, I, I told the doors manager, because he was like, you know, facilitating us getting the reels and all that stuff. I said, hey, I'm mixing it at this day at Westlake Studios. And I said, just joking around, I said, and if the doors want to come in and sit in on the mix, I'll be at the studio at one o'clock. And they were like, they're like, they can't make it tomorrow. They can only work the day after. And it was, uh, he's like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, are you serious? Like, I didn't think, I didn't believe him. He's like, yeah, yeah, they, Ray, John and Robbie want to come over. I was like, oh shit, I got to do this shit at my house. Cause that's, you know, I, I wanted to do it in the studio. So it's nice, but I was doing it at my house anyway. So they, they said, they'll come over four o'clock, knock on the door, open up. It's uncle Ray. And Ray Manzari came in and then they all three showed up. And I was like, they, they listened to what I had and then they added their shit on top of it. It was dope as fuck. Yeah, that was amazing getting to see them play live and then you interacting and working with them at the same time. Because uh, I've been in the studio with you and other people, but that is just a different type of thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, that that's probably one of my most honorable sessions I've ever done in my whole life. 
being a, being able to work with those guys. I mean, a lot of people that I work with are greats and I love working with them, but the doors was like yeah. something else. And then I did another song with them with Tech Nine too, and we they came back in and we worked together. It was really cool. Yeah. Tech's I mean, a huge fan of theirs. Cool. And Ray's the kind of guy you could call him at any time and just talk politics with him, talk about music, ask him about this. Hey man, like I'll hear something on one of their records, like, hey, what how did you make that effect? He's like, you know, you gotta call our engineer, uh Bruce Botnick. He gave me his number and I call him like, hey, what did you guys do? And he'd tell me, you know, hey, we ran it through the move. We did this, you know. So he was like always, you know, a real cool person to be able to call and like pick his brain about things that, you know, you can't read about that shit in books. They don't write about how they did that shit. Not, not at all. Okay. So taking it back a little bit before the doors, um, with in the 97-ish era, I remember – just you really getting a lot of stuff going with like Frost and Tash among, mm. other, among many others. Mm. So what was happening for you at the time that was starting to make it break through and then get with MC8 a little bit after that and Rappin' Forte, Mr. Mike, what was changing in the, in the late nineties? Like I, I think that um, I was a little bit more uh, started to be more confident that of like what, 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 style of beats I wanted to make that people were liking, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, as a producer, you're trying to find yourself. You're like, at first you're like copying the people that you like in a way, you know what I'm saying? Like I wanted to make beats like Pete Rock and I wanted to make beats like the large professor, but I wanted to make beats like Dre and I wanted to meet, make beats like the bomb squad too. You know what I mean? So it's like, you're finding little pieces of it until you find something that's your own, that people are start liking your beats when you give them somebody a beat CD they're like oh yo I like one three and five put them aside for me all right cool so that so once you you know once you start getting in the business to meeting a and r people and meeting other artists you go to a studio session and there's some other artists there you better have a CD with you with some beats on it ready to pass to them with your number on it and that's just what it was I just started networking more and then more people were you know, once records started coming out, then people start coming looking for you. Like, hey, I want that guy that worked, that did that song to do some shit for me. I see if he's got any more beats. And that's all it is. It's just like networking, but also being able to be somebody that's reliable that when they call you, you're going to do the work. You know what I'm saying? If they call you at one o'clock in the morning to go to the studio, if you say no, then you say no. But that's not the people that are going to be always working because music, they don't, we don't have a time that we do shit. You know what I'm saying? Snoop, he'll call me at four o'clock in the morning and tell me to come do something. He don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? He, and he ain't trying to be like, are you awake? He'd be like, Hey, cuz I need you to come over here and engineer for me. Blah, 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 blah. And I don't never say no because I wouldn't be here if I said no to anybody. i will be like, man, I sleep when I go home. All right, cool. I'll be right over there. Give me 10 minutes. I'm always ready to go. I'm always ready to put in the work. And that's how I think was in, with with making good music is that being able to be somebody reliable that you know these artists can call on to do something. Whether whatever it is, like if he needs me to come engineer, I come engineer for him. If he needs me to come play guitar on something, I'll come do it. Or whoever it is, you know. Well, they always say the best ability is availability. <laughs> so absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And when Eminem calls you and says, Hey. Can you be over here in two days? I want to work on something. I'll be like, yes, sir. <laughs> you fucking right. I'll be there. You fucking right. I'll be there in two days. You know, it's an honor that if somebody calls you, you want to always be able to come through. And I, I always like to come through for anybody that calls me because I feel honored that they'd even ask me. So I, I don't like to let people down. I like to do a good job. 